Now we're going to spend some time talking about Newton's three laws of motion. Now, Isaac Newton wrote these three laws back in the 1600s. He published them July 5th, 1687. So they've been around a long, long time. This is old stuff. But you can't understand how forces act on objects unless you talk about Newton's three laws of motion. Well, before we get too deeply involved with Newton's three laws of motion, we have to clear up some vocabulary. We have to make sure that we all understand what a net force is. Why? Because it's just one of those terms that we use a lot when we talk about forces. And a net force has to do with the actual force that's acting on an object. Well, forces have a direction. A force being a push or a pull, that obviously means that a force has a direction. So that makes forces vectors. Remember that a vector has two things. It has a quantity or a magnitude. It also has a direction. So an example of a force might be something like positive 3 newtons. You see it has a quantity or magnitude, an amount, and the sign that you see right here actually tells you the direction of the force. How does that work? Well, it goes back to that coordinate system. And you remember that coordinate system has two axes. It has a y-axis and it has an x-axis. And we remember, of course, that the center right here is referred to as the origin. And if we can imagine a push or a pull a force acting on that origin, pushing on that origin, we can look at that as pushing on that origin in four different directions. One direction would be to the right along this x-axis. And since the numbers here on this part of the axis are all positive, any force that acts to the right is said to be a positive acting force. The positive simply says that the force is acting to the right. A force that's acting to the left would obviously be negative. So if we talk about a negative force, we're talking about a force that's acting to the left, as long as we're talking about the x-axis. If we're talking about the y-axis, then a positively acting force would be one that acts upward. And a negative force would be one that acts downward. So if we're talking in terms of a force acting along the horizontal plane, which is the x-axis, it can be negative acting left or positive acting to the right. If we talk about a force acting in the vertical plane up or down then we can talk about that force being negative acting downward or positive acting upward. So back down here positive 3 newtons would be a 3 newton force pushing or pulling to the right. A negative 3 newton force would be a 3 newton force pushing or pulling to the left as long as we're talking about that horizontal plane which we're going to talk about right now. Let's take this idea and use it to help us analyze how forces act on real life objects. We'll take a look first of all at in this case a wagon. The wagon has a mass of 10 kilograms and you notice that there are two forces acting on this wagon and they're both acting in opposite directions. The forces are represented by arrows. You can always represent a force by an arrow. The direction the arrow is pointing shows the direction of the push or the pull, the direction of the force. So this particular arrow shows a force acting in a direction of right so this represents actually a positive force. And this arrow over here, since it's acting to the left, it's pointing to the left, it represents a negative force. Now we can give these forces values and since the arrows are both the same size, I'm going to go ahead and give these forces the same value. And the first value I'm going to give over here is 10 newtons. And of course this is a positive 10 newtons, which means that it's a force of 10 newtons acting in the direction of the right. Over here we have a force of 10 newtons acting to the left. 
Now, since these forces are equal in magnitude, in other words, they're the same size, but they're acting in opposite directions, they're going to cancel each other out. And we can look at that mathematically. It's actually pretty simple to do. It's just an addition problem. We have positive 10 newtons plus negative 10 newtons, and that equals 0 newtons remembering of course that a Newton is the unit that's used to measure force obviously you would have to name the force unit after Isaac Newton and so it was so our answer here is zero Newtons that is the net force so the net force the actual force acting on this cart is equal to zero Newtons it doesn't mean there are no forces acting on the cart there are but the forces are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction so in this case they cancel each other out leaving the net force the actual force equal to zero newtons well let's go ahead and look at another situation we'll look at another wagon here and we're going to analyze the forces acting on this wagon and determine the net force well let's give these forces some values we have a force acting to the right so this is going to be a positive force and I'm just going to give it a value of say 10 newtons and over here on the right we have a force that's acting to the left so this is going to be a negative force and the arrow looks to be about twice the size of the arrow over on the other side so I'm going to give this a value of let's say 20 newtons so let's go ahead and figure out what the net force is we have positive 10 newtons and negative 20 newtons both acting on this cart on this wagon and so that gives us this mathematic relationship we have positive 10 newtons plus negative 20 newtons so that's going to equal negative 10 newtons and that is our net force so the net force here is negative 10 newtons well that seemed pretty easy to do so let's go ahead and we'll take a look at another wagon here and we'll analyze the forces acting on it and determine the net force well we have a force acting to the right so this is a positive force and I'm going to give it a value of 10 newtons I can just make these up as I go along because I'm the teacher and let's see we have 10 newtons acting to the right positive 10 newtons and it looks like there's no arrow over here so we're assuming that there's no force so this force is zero newtons so in this situation we can set this problem up we have positive 10 newtons plus zero newtons and that's going to give us a net force of positive 10 newtons in this situation so keep this in mind the net force is the sum of the forces acting on the object here we added that's a sum positive 10 newtons and 0 newtons and we got net force of positive 10 newtons in the second cart up here remember in this problem we found the sum of the forces acting on the cart we had positive 10 newtons plus negative 20 newtons and that gave us negative 10 newtons so net force is the sum of the forces acting on the object well we can go ahead now we can look at a at another situation here's one more cart we have two forces acting on this cart it looks to be maybe I'll give this a value of positive 30 newtons and this one because it's the same size arrow I'm gonna give it 30 newtons and of course it's in the same direction so this is also positive 30 newtons so when we set this problem up we have positive 30 newtons plus positive 30 newtons and we find the sum of that and it gives us positive 60 newtons and that is our net force positive 60 newtons in other words the sum of the forces acting on this cart is 60 newtons to the right 
go back through the problems, make sure you understand what net force is, and then we'll take a look at a couple of practice problems, maybe a little quiz.